والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم صلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Mercy to Mankind On my right is brother Ahmed Abdul Jawad and on my left is brother Muhammad Abdul Salam We would like to welcome them all to our program Last time we met we talked about the first migration of the Muslims to Abyssinia. They're trying to flood their country, their homeland, simply because they want to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Yet, the pagans, their people, their blood did not allow them to do so. They tortured them, and in some incidents, they killed some of them, they deprived them from their basic rights to worship their Lord. Therefore, a number of 16 uh, uh, almost Muslims immigrated to Abyssinia, to Al Habasha, in the eastern coast of Africa. And soon afterwards, they heard that there was a truce between the pagans and the Muslims. So they returned immediately hoping to find this news true. And to their surprise, it was not. Therefore, the Prophet ﷺ gave them the permission for another group to go again to Abyssinia. But this time, because the first group were as a scouting group, they saw the environment, they saw the country. Once they came back, they told their brothers and sisters that the things there were settled and it was okay for them to migrate to Abyssinia. The second group were comprised of over a hundred Muslims, men, women, and children. They all fled Mecca and went to live in that new land. And it is not easy to migrate from one country to the other. They're not going there to pursue a job or a career. They're not going there to medicate. They're not going there to do something that is recreational. It's not for the recreation they're going. They are going there to flee with their religion, to be able to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And they're abandoning everything that was so close to their hearts, their families, their loved ones, their properties, and everything that connects them with their past, they are leaving all that behind in pursuit of the, their cause, which is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. Do we think that the pagans left them on their own because they have left their country? They gave them their freedom to worship Allah Azza wa Jal? No. no. The pagans sent an envoy follow them. to follow them and to convince the king and the authorities to send them back again to them. And this is exactly what's happening in the world at the moment. If someone flees with his religion to another country to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone, he's not a terrorist. He's not an extremist. He simply wants to worship Allah Azza wa Jal in peace. And that is why the Muslims had to migrate to Abyssinia to be able to worship Allah Azza wa Jal in peace. Later on, 
the pagans did not leave them to worship Allah in peace. So they sent a convoy of two. They sent Amr ibn al-As and Abdullah ibn Abi Rabi'ah with the sole objective to make the king throw them back again to their people and country. What they did was very basic. They started by bribing the clergymen. They went and met the clergymen of the king who were the priests at the time and they gave them presents and they explained to them that to your kingdom came ignorant boys of ours. They are from our country. They have abandoned the religion and they did not come into your religion as Christians and made up a new religion that no one ever heard of. And our people sent us to your king so that we could convince him to send them back with us. And we wish, once we talk to the king, that you support us in this uh, process. Because our people know them better than you do. And we know their faults and their shortcomings. So the clergymen agreed to do this, the priests, because they were bribed. They were giving presents. The, the envoys, Abdullah ibn Abi Rabi'ah and Amr ibn As, also presented the king himself with these presents. And the king had a title. His name was Asmaha, but his title was an Najashi. And every superpower had a title for the king. So, for example, Heraclius was the ruler of the Romans, the Byzantians, but his title was Caesar. And also Kisra was the ruler of Persia, and he had a name of his own. So, the clergymen agreed. And they called for a meeting with the king, and the king permitted them to come in. So they started saying to him that this is the case, O king. Ignorant boys of us came to your, con to your kingdom. They have in no innovated a new religion that is not their ancestors' religion and they're not your religion. It's a made-up religion. And our people know them better than you do. And we do, we do not want them to spoil your country. And the dignitaries of Quraysh has sent us to request you to send them back with us. So, please do that. Immediately, the clergymen and the priests talked and said, yes, we agree, this is the best thing to do. The only thing that Abdullah ibn Abi Rabi'ah and Amr ibn As feared most was that the king hears them and listens to what they say. Because they knew that the words that come out of a Muslim's mouth has the effect of magic. Magic. It is so convincing, it is so appealing to people. So they did not want anything from uh, uh, the Muslims to be uh, delivered in front of the king. Once the clergyman requested the king to send them away, the king refused that. He said, this is unfair. People coming to my country, trusting me, choosing me over all the other countries. And you want me to send them away without hearing their justifications to what you, you have said? This cannot be done. I have to listen to them. So he sent his messenger to the Muslims requesting their presence in his court. The Muslims, once they heard that they were requested to uh, appear in front of the king, felt helpless and they were afraid. Now, we have just landed in this country and we are enjoying the freedom of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal without being tortured or harassed. And now the king wants us to talk to him. What will we do? He will definitely send us away 
with uh, Amr ibn al-As and his companions. But faith always prevails. They said, we will go and meet him and there is nothing for us to hide. We will say whatever Islam tells us to do. So they went there and their spokesman was Jafar ibn Abi Talib. He was the cousin of the Prophet So he told him, the king asked him, what is this religion that you have brought to my country? And why did you abandon the religion of your ancestors? And around the king were those, those clergymen with their Bibles open around him. So Jafar ibn Abi Talib answered him in a very straightforward way. He told him, O king, we were people of ignorance and we used to worship idols. We used to eat dead meat that was not slaughtered. Any dead animal, we, we could eat the flesh of it. We used to do everything that was bad, especially vice. We used to not connect with our next of kin and relatives. On the contrary, we used to abuse them. We used to be bad with our neighbors. We never respected our neighbors. And it was survival of the fittest. The stronger usually ate and overcome the weak. We used to be living in such manners until Allah the Almighty sent us a messenger from among us. We know him, we know his lineage, we know his fathers and, and, and forefathers. He was among us and we knew how honest, trustworthy and faithful he was. We knew him because we saw whatever he did and he was not one of the bad ones. He was among the very best of us. He called us for one thing. He called us to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone and forget everything else that we used to worship and associate with Allah. He told us not to worship the stones, the idols, the trees that we used to worship. He, he told us and ordered us to be honest in speech, to fulfill our promises, to give whatever we have been entrusted with and to be kind to our next of kin and to be kind to our neighbors and give them the best things we have. He told us not to do anything that is bad and he told us that bloodshed is forbidden so he prevented us from killing each other. He prevented us from false testimonies and he prevented us from uh, uh, abusing the money of orphans. And he told us not to worship except Allah Azza wa Jal. He ordered us to pray and to pay money for the poor. And he asked us to fast the holy month of Ramadan. And Jafar started mentioning the good things about Islam to the king. And this is what we have done. And this is what we have performed. And that is why our people did what they did to us, tortured us, abused us, and kicked us of our country. We have a short break, and inshallah, we will be right back. exploitation, hatred, all diseases of the heart. For the cure, join Huda TV every Sunday at 20 GMT for Moments for the Heart.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Just before the break, we talked about how Ja'far ibn Abi Talib presented Islam in the shortest and most concise way that anyone could do. And this is our role as Muslims. Whenever you're requested to talk about Islam, what do you usually do? This is the role model how we should present Islam. What is Islam? Not to associate any other with Allah Azza wa Jal. To do good things, to stay away from bad things. End of story. No one in his sound mind can come and say, well, I don't like Islam. All in all. Because whatever Islam calls for is on the, is on the top list of virtues. And whatever Islam forbids, it's also in the list of uh, 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 vice. And this is the beauty of Islam that it appeals to people's nature and no one rejects Islam because of what it is. Maybe they reject Islam because of the actions of Muslims. But when the Muslims' actions are in line with the Quran and Sunnah, then his uh, da'wah, his message is easily uh, accepted by uh, others. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib told him that this is what the Prophet ﷺ requested us to do. And when our people did not allow us to worship Allah Azza wa Jal in freedom, and they started torturing us, abusing us, humiliating us, then we had no other choice but to leave the country and go to a country where we are sure that the authorities will allow us to do so. And we heard about your country, O king, and we came to worship Allah Azza wa Jal here. So the Najashi, the king, told them and asked them, do you have something that you can recite to me that book or revelation that you claim your prophet has brought you? So Ja'far ibn Abi Talib read to him the very beginning of Surah Maryam. And in Islam, we have a whole chapter that is called after Mary the Virgin. And when he recited these verses that talked about Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, and how he was so old when he was blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal and given this son, uh, uh, John the Baptist. And it goes on to talk about him taking care of Mary the Virgin and supporting her while she was uh, uh, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alone because her mother, the daughter of Imran, uh, the, the wife of Imran uh, made an oath and vowed that if she's pregnant, whatever she is, when she ever, whenever she delivers, then this baby will be devoted only for the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the story goes on to talk to us about her pregnancy, the miraculous pregnancy without a father, and that uh, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, may peace and blessing be upon him. Yeah, yeah, I think it's very intelligent from Gafar to uh, recite verses from Surah Maryam. Uh, yeah, that's, that's very true because he chose the verses that are related to the Christians. Yeah. And, and you can tell, you can sense that the Najashi was a committed Christian and that he loved Allah Azza wa Jal. And he surrounded himself with people of religion, clergymen and, and priests. And this is the religious aspect of ruling. Because even Muslims, Muslim rulers, so should surround themselves with Muslim scholars and, 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 and people of knowledge to guide them what is acceptable in Islam and what is not. And the rulers, if they do not surround themselves with Muslims, uh, uh, Muslim scholars, then they will go astray. They will do whatever the superpowers ask them to do without knowing if this goes along with the Quran and Sunnah or not. And without the support of Allah Azza wa Jal, we have no one to support us because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that brings all the benefit and prevents all the harm. La ilaha illahu. I want to ask a question. Uh, why uh, they, uh, the pagans, 
choose the Amr ibn As and the Abdullah ibn Abi Rabi'ah. Definitely, when you send someone to execute a mission, you have to pick the best one for that mission. Amr ibn al-As was known to be one of the smartest Arabs at the time. He used to be called the Dahiyah of the Arab because he was so intelligent and he knew how to plot uh, uh, and, and, and make strategies and execute them. And that is why, and he was very uh, 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 articulate. And that is why once you hear his presentation in front of the king, to me, I was convinced, if I were the king, I would have sent them away because it was very convincing. They are from our people. They've left the religion of their ancestors and made up a new religion. And we know them more than you do. And all what we want is for you to send them with us. And I was sent not by the lower uh, level of people. I was sent by the dignitaries of Mecca, of Quraysh. So I come with power. So this kind of presentation shows you his intellectual powers. And that is why they chose him to go and, 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 and bring these people. Sheikh, uh, uh, migration in Islam, as we know, that is leaving a non-Muslim country or going to, uh, to a Muslim country where you can apply the rules and the players of Islam. So <clears throat> the Muslims uh, went to, to, to Abbasina or to Habasha, and that was a non-Muslim country. Mm -hmm. And why did they, they exactly choose this country? Okay, that's, that's a very good question. Migration originally is not to go to a Muslim country. Migration is performed to enable you to worship Allah Azza wa freely. So even if you live in a Muslim country where you are oppressed, tortured, and prosecuted just because you are a Muslim or practicing Islam, then it is a must that you migrate to go somewhere where you can practice Islam. Even if that somewhere were to be a non-Muslim country. As the case nowadays, unfortunately, with the Muslims drifting away from Islam. So at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there were no Muslim countries. The Prophet ﷺ gave us the justification. He told the companions, once he told them and instructed them to go to Abyssinia, he told them that the reason behind that is that the ruler of Abyssinia is a fair and just king. People would not be done wrong to in his presence. And that is why they went. And it was manifested here clearly that was the case. So once the king heard from Jafar ibn Abi Talib and Jafar started reciting the few verses of Surah Maryam, the Virgin Mary, the king started to cry. And all the priests and clergymen also started to cry because they were touched by this beautiful story by this beautiful uh, uh, chapter of the Quran. And then the king said, you may go and worship Allah as you please. I will not allow them to take you to your country. And everyone went back to their quarters. Abdullah ibn Abi Rabi'a and Amr ibn al-As were furious because they failed their mission. Amr ibn al-As, who was one of the most intelligent Arabs at the time, said, tomorrow I'm going to do something that will annihilate them from this country. And Abdullah was a little bit softer person and told him, come on, they are our cousins and brothers. Don't, don't do something that is bad for them. But Amr ibn al-As was determined. The following morning, he went to the king and told him that, okay, you gave them permission to stay, but... I just wanted to inform you that they say something really bad about Jesus Christ. And of course, as a Christian, well, unfortunately, nowadays it's a different story. In, in the old days, in the real Christians would not allow anyone to say bad, anything that is bad about Jesus Christ. Peace and blessing be upon him. As, as Muslims, this is completely forbidden for a Muslim to say anything that is negative about Jesus Christ, Moses, Abraham, Noah, any messenger mm -hmm. or prophet of Allah. 
And that was the case at the time of the king of Abyssinia, and Najashi. Nowadays, it's completely different. You can have people insulting Jesus Christ or making bad drawings or even cursing him. You have people impersonating him in movies, in, 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 in uh, comic books and so on. And everybody is normal with this. And this is not acceptable in Islam. And it was not acceptable at the time of the Abyssinian king. So once he heard this, he asked for the Muslims to come again in front of him. And then they felt that there is trouble in the horizon. So they started asking each other, what are we going to say? Jafar said, it's very easy. This is our religion. We cannot lie about this. We have to say exactly what we are told to say. So the king asked Jafar, what do you say about Jesus Christ? May peace and blessing be upon him. So he told him, we only say what Allah Azza wa has, has told us, that he is the messenger of Allah, he is the servant of Allah, and he is a spirit from Allah Azza wa Jal, given to the Virgin Mary, miraculously, miraculously giving birth to Jesus Christ, peace and blessing be upon him. And Najashi was a very wise king, and he himself was a monotheist. He believed in the oneness of Allah. So he looked down and said, this is exactly what the Bible said about him. The clergyman, the priest, all started to tremble, and said, oh, making noise. And he told them, don't make whatever you want, make whatever noise you want. This is the truth that is in the Bible. And he told the Muslims that, go and worship Allah Azza wa Jal in my country. You are the safe ones. No one will dare come and stop in your face. And whoever dares attack you, then he is attacking me. As for you, Amr ibn al-As and Abdullah ibn Rabi'ah, take your gifts, I don't need them, and go back to your country. I will never accept bribe from people when Allah Azza wa did not accept the bribe from me. And this has another story, and inshallah we may get to know this story when we meet again. And until then, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.